So, ladies and uh, gentlemen, good afternoon. Welcome to the home of FIFA for this press conference with FIFA President Blatter, who's sitting next to me. Press conference which follows an extraordinary meeting of the Executive Committee of FIFA held today here at the home of FIFA in Zurich. Before I hand over the floor to the President, let me give you a couple of information. First, uh, this press conference is intended to be relatively brief, but obviously uh, we'll take a number of your questions uh, during it, and I will ask you to limit your questions actually to one per reporter. Thank you for following this principle. I think it's important, and even more so since uh, we have already quite a full house so to say. The next uh, information which I want to give you, as you all know, there are ongoing investigations being conducted by US and Swiss authorities. FIFA is cooperating with those investigations, and as a result, there will be many topics and issues that the President is not going to be able to comment on today it would be inappropriate for him to do so. And finally, I would like to say that FIFA Secretary General Jérôme Valk has to focus now on the upcoming preliminary draw of the uh, 2018 FIFA World Cup, which he will conduct, as you know, and therefore he is, uh, as we speak, on his way to St. Petersburg. So, this having been said, I will now hand over the floor to the FIFA president for his introductory remarks. FIFA president, the word is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Nicolas. Uh, by the way, I'm not alone. I am with you. And um, I'm very happy uh, to receive you this afternoon here in the home of FIFA. I think it is um, a very important day for football, and uh, I'm very pleased uh, to welcome such a large gathering of global media. I'm very sorry for two reasons. First, we have been a little bit delayed by our meeting today because uh, there were some um, uh, important uh, items to be discussed and finally decided. And this has taken more time than we have had in our um, agenda in the preview of time, in the, in the time scale. Uh, secondly, I am uh, I'm sorry what has happened at the so-called beginning entry here. I just uh, called uh, my late mother and she said, uh, don't worry, it's just the lack of education. Okay, but um, uh, anyway, I, uh, I feel with you and uh, such things should not happen. But, you know, in football, you never know where are the limits in football. And uh, this is uh, something which I witnessed now for 40 years. So uh, it's, uh, it is something important. Uh, you will ask me why I'm, uh, I am happy to meet you, because this gives me also the impression that I'm still alive. Uh, sometimes I had the impression that uh, after uh, the, uh, let's say, this uh, tsunami that on the uh, 27th of uh, May came uh, to, to Zurich, uh, that um, uh, the waves of the, the tsunami has taken me away. No, no, not at all, not at all. Um, I'm, I'm still here, and uh, now I'm sitting. I could stand there, but uh, they, they said it, uh, I'll be more polite if I speak with you here in the, in the middle of the room and not on, on a dais. I would have done it, but it's good so. What has happened then? It has happened something very, very special. You know that. I don't uh, need to repeat that. But it has been, it has been in such a situation that after having been re-elected 
uh, president of FIFA with 133 votes at the uh, Congress, the ordinary Congress, on the 29th here in, uh, in Zurich. The pressure which came to FIFA, to me a little bit, but to FIFA especially, and it was not only the pressure of uh, any authorities, uh, jurisdictional authorities. No, it was also the pressure of uh, the uh, was political interference. It was also the pressure of you, media. Yeah, I am in the media. I, am, I know I'm a, a, still a journalist and part of the AIPS, and uh, I'm yours. I wouldn't say that you are me, but I am yours. Well, having said that, I had to do something very special, and I did it. I did it. In footballing terms, I would say I kicked the ball out of the field uh, to stop something. And this is what I did on uh, the 2nd of June when I say I will put my mandate at the disposal. And this is what I have said. I put my mandate at this bottle. But I'm still the elected president, and today I speak with you as the elected president. So when I said this meeting is very important uh, for the world of football, that's true. Because today, in the uh, Extraordinary Executive Committee, uh, we have taken um, decisions. Uh, we have taken important decisions. And uh, one of these important decisions, it's already known all around the world, is uh, that we have approved uh, the date of the extraordinary elective congress that shall be organized in Zurich, and it will be next year, 2016, on the 26th of uh, February. And there, a new president of FIFA will be elected. Naturally, I'm keen to know uh, who will be the next president. But I have also to say that today we have done something else. Today in this extraordinary Congress, extraordinary executive committee meeting can be compared to a Congress, We have taken very important decisions. And I was so happy at the end of this meeting when today the FIFA president with his executive committee and together with the confederations, because they were represented by their presidents and the members elected to be member of the FIFA, we have taken a resolution, it's not only a decision, a resolution, a combined resolution that we want to go or go again into a reform process. You know, we had a, a, re, a reform process since 2011, but there are still a few points uh, which were uh, not dealt with. But now we have decided to go in and uh, we have uh, decided to have a task force, 11 people, um, 10 players and the coach, but the coach is a playing coach. He will be an independent personality. We will uh, decide uh, together with the president of the confederation who will be this personality uh, to chair uh, a reform task force. Um, I would say these are, I don't know if I can say it's the intelligent 11 or it's the 11th of intelligence. But anyway, uh, we try uh, to have uh, such a task force uh, to go into the uh, developing proposals that have been presented today by the um, Chairman of uh, Independent, Chairman of the Committee for Control and Compliance, Domenico Scala. And uh, what are the, the task force, what, what, the, what they have to do special, 
specifically. You will read more in the, the press release, which I think has already been dis right. distributed. You have it. What that will be, we, we will have there enhanced centralized integrity checks for the executive committee. And this is important, integrity checks. We have it. We have had it on the first reform process, but it was not accepted the right way. It must be done by a neutral organization. In this case, it shall be done by FIFA's Ethics Committee to do so. Then introduction of term limits, higher standards of governance and the football structures. And then we have to make sure that the decisions that have been taken or they are taken by the Congress of FIFA, they go down in the, in the pyramid. They go to the Confederation and to the national associations. FIFA cannot be alone responsible for 209 national associations, 300 million active participants in football, and 1.6 billion people directly or indirectly linked with our game. It cannot be done only by one organization. It has to go through the pyramid of FIFA. And therefore, with this uh, action, they start immediately. This action start immediately and uh, will be reported in uh, seven weeks. We have uh, the next executive committee meeting in September here in Zurich. They will report on that. They will report. And uh, now, I think, with this, we are on the right track, FIFA, with uh, improved uh, governance and greater accountability. But you have realized also that uh, during my silence, uh, when uh, I just said the wave of the tsunami has not taken me away, but a little bit more silent, the FIFA activities were going on. We have organized wonderful competitions, the under 20 in, um, in New Zealand. Uh, we have organized uh, the famous uh, FIFA's uh, Women's World Cup, the best one in the history with 24 teams. And I'm uh, particularly proud about the success. We have uh, organized also the Beach Soccer World Cup. Everything has been organized and in addition, all development programs have been carried out everywhere in the world. FIFA was not stopped because the president was not moving. He will be moving this week because uh, in uh, this week we will have uh, the, uh, the draw, the official draw uh, for the preliminary round of FIFA's World Cup in St. Petersburg. And for the first time in FIFA's history, all 209 associations have participated in this World Cup preliminary round. Some of them are already eliminated, but some of them, the smaller one, are still in. So it will be a great achievement. So I'm particularly proud that without my presence on the field of play, FIFA was still in activity. Thank you for being with us uh, today. And uh, now I give the floor to the press officer, the director of uh, communication, Nicolas Mango. Merci, President, for these uh, introductory remarks. So we're going to take questions from the floor now, just to repeat and to make it clear again. Please, one question each time. Thank you very much. We start with Richard Conway over there, please. Nisha, Richard. Thank you. So please introduce yourself and your media organization. Thank you. Richard Conway from BBC. Mr. Blatter, in, in the uh, press release here, it says that there will be individual disclosure of compensation. In the spirit of this new FIFA that, and the reform that you're trying to introduce, will you tell us how much you are paid? We, um, yes, um, we will uh, do this uh, exactly as it has been uh, prepared, and we will do it uh, concerning all those they are involved in this disclosure. And we will do it at the time when this comes to a decision. Thank you. Here. Please, yes. 
um, Mr. Blatter, Kami and Zerum, I repeat Richard's question. In the spirit of transparency, why don't you start now as you mean to go on? Please tell this room and the billions of football fans around the world, how much do you earn? You can ask me this question the whole afternoon if you want an answer. I stay with this answer. It concerns not only the FIFA president, it concerns all the officials. They are linked in this matter. Next question, please. Mr. Blatter, Lee Wellings of Al Jazeera, you said you kicked the ball out. Why specifically and so hastily on June 2nd did you decide to do this? It happened in rather a hurry. It happened with? It happened very quickly, very quickly on June the 2nd. You suddenly decided you were going to move to one side. Why on June the 2nd, specifically? I just tried to explain to you that the pressure which was coming from uh, the uh, different uh, uh, groups, they were attacking FIFA, including, I have said, the, the media, but it was not the, the uh, let's say, uh, the final decision that I had, I had with my conscience to do something for FIFA, not for me. I wanted to, and I still want, and this is uh, uh, my uh, prerogative, and this is my, I would say, my duty and mission now is to defend the institution FIFA, and not to defend myself. I can defend myself. I don't need help for that, but FIFA. And I am happy that today the, the executive committee, together with the confederations, they have said, yes, President, we will help you. We take also the responsibility to go and defend FIFA. Mr. Platter, Tarek Panter from Bloomberg. You haven't been all that silent. You've, you've done some interviews with, with the local press. And one of the things I noticed is that you said, how can you be responsible for 300 million participants? But I'm talking about members of your exco, Laos, Teixeira, before you, Havilland, Chuck Blazer, Jack Warner. These aren't 300 million people. These are people who've sat around your table for years. Why did you not take decisive action against these people for all these years? Why has it taken this crisis for you to say FIFA must change. Do you, are you credible and can you answer why you did nothing for all those years? Thank you. Listen, if you are looking into the activity which has been made by the, uh, the ethics committee of FIFA uh, before 2011, already this committee intervened, the ethics committee of FIFA, Therefore, at this famous 2nd of December 19, or 2010, we had only a committee composed by 22 members, because two of the members were suspended by the Ethics Committee. Later, after the 2011 reform process with the two-chamber Ethics Committee, then have a look now of the composition of the two days executive committee and what was the committee at that time of the 2nd of uh, December 2010. And you will realize that only 11 members, 11 members have survived. A question from CCTV. And, and by the way, uh, by the way, just, uh, just to add, uh, I cannot be uh, declared responsible uh, for the moral comportment of members that I have not elected and that I have no power to not elect. And that's why one of uh, the uh, uh, biggest or imp most important part we are doing now, it is the integrity check uh, for members coming to FIFA. President, question from CCTV. Michel Platini has been asked by a majority of world football chiefs to stand for the presidency of FIFA. So do you have any words for him? Do you think he will make a successor? Thank you. The executive committee has just decided today uh, that uh, the uh, electoral process will start today. So I wish all the candidates uh, best success. 
and also to Michel Platini. Mr. Blatter, can you just, just absolutely say that on February the 27th, you will not be the FIFA president, and what will you then do? <laughs> on the 27th of uh, February, or 26th, I think it's. 26. 26th of February, uh, FIFA will have a new president. FIFA will have a new young president. And uh, I think I will uh, come back uh, to my uh, uh, work or my, my, it was a little bit my hobby, I have to say. Uh, I was uh, as a journalist, but this time I would go to radio because I think the, uh, the radio is the most uh, popular item in, uh, in uh, information because it's 24 hours and everybody can listen. And if you are traveling all around the world, you always hear radio. So if you ask me what I want to do, and it's easier to speak than to write. Señor Presidente, Daniel. Mr. President, Daniel Martinez, ESPN Sports. Could you please answer in Spanish if it's at all possible? You said in one of the interviews you gave to local media, that uh, uh, the fault uh, for the organization being in the situation falls to the confederations. And now you tell us uh, that the relationship with the confederations is based on trust to find a new way forward. Which of these two versions is the version you want to hold to? I'm not sure what interview you are referring to. But the responsibility here is not uh, that of a organization. This is all the fault of specific individuals that have uh, uh, allegedly uh, uh, committed certain acts of fraud. It's not organizations. Thank you. Mr. Blatter, Paul Kelso. Sky News here. One of the reforms you have planned is for term limits. I understand that's a maximum of three terms of four years. You've just started your fifth term. If it's not good enough for you, why should it be good enough for anyone who follows? You are following uh, FIFA and FIFA's activity since years. So you would also um, uh, remember that we had this, um, the um, uh, limit of mandates on our first paper of uh, the reform after 2011. And this specific item, limitation of mandates, has been killed at that time in a discussion of the Secretary Generals of the Confederations and the Confederations by saying the one of the Confederations, and I repeat it, it's the truth, was UEFA. They were saying that the term limit is only valid for the FIFA president and for nobody else. And that's why at the Congress, in uh, 2013, already the Congress on, uh, the, um, on the isle, island of Morris, this item was presented but not dealt with because it has not been presented properly to the Congress. But in 2014, in, uh, in uh, Sao Paulo, this item was presented together with the limitation of the age limit to, to the Congress, and it has been rejected by, the, by a large majority of the Congress. Now I come back with that because I think it is not only a good idea, it is one thing which, will, which is very important that you have to reduce the number of mandates 
of the members, but not only of the president you have to reduce, of everybody, in the FIFA, in the confederations, and then down. And then you will have a right solution. Um, my name is Abdelaziz Abu Hamar. I'm uh, from Doha Stadium newspaper, Pan-Arab newspaper. I just want to ask the president, on 26 February, if the majority required two-thirds from the uh, members of the FIFA did not attend the Congress, what will be the legal situation? What will be the status over there? Is, is my question is clear? Yeah, you, your question is clear, but uh, look in the statutes. Uh, I'm not going to read the statutes, but if 51% of uh, the members are present, then a, a Congress is uh, automatically uh, convened uh, the right way. But uh, have a look in the statute. You have a copy here. You can take it home. Uh, it's uh, Charlie Sale, Daily Mail. Uh, you said you intend to be a radio journalist from February 27th. Can you state categorically that you will not uh, put your name up as a candidate for this upcoming election? I have already been asked and uh, uh, why I shall say categorically. I will not be a candidate for the election uh, in 2016. Uh, I have put my mandate at disposal and now there will be new election, election for a new president. I insisted on that. It's not only for a president, for a new president. I cannot be the new president because I'm an old president. No, not so old, but old. <laughs> Mr. Blatter, Rob Harris from the Associated Press. You've worked at FIFA now for many years, surrounded by suspected crooks. Will you now go and tell the FBI, the US authorities, no, and, what, and will you help them with their investigation to put the, any of these people behind bars if they are guilty? Well, listen, I thank you that I am working a long time for FIFA. I am working uh, for 40 years now, 40 years and a few months. It is a good jubilee, but 40 years is never a jubilee. I do not enter into a discussion concerning the the uh, uh, investigations uh, which are made by the authorities in, uh, in America and the authorities in Switzerland. Uh, I have no right to enter into such consideration. Sorry to not enter there. As was said earlier on, thank you. President de Brazil, Jorge Luis. President from Brazil, Jorge Luis, on the absence of uh, Mr. De Niro from the CBF, uh, how could you justify this second absence? And personally, uh, what do you think of the absence of some comable members uh, in this important meeting you held today? You know, you know that uh, the members of the FIFA Executive Committee, they are invited to participate in meetings. Um, there is not only the full uh, contingent uh, uh, present, and if one of the presidents of a confederation, or in this case, Confederación Brasileira de Futebol, has decided to not come, that it's his problem, that he's not coming, but this has no influence on the decisions taken by the FIFA Executive Committee. Owen Gibson from The Guardian. Um, as you say, you've been at FIFA for 40 years, you've been president for 18 years. Um, why is it only now that these reforms are being brought forward and can you understand why people are very cynical about the fact that nothing has changed up to this point? You, you are a professional journalist, so you have been informed about uh, the reforms that have been made by FIFA since 2011 and you will have realized that 85% uh, of all the reforms that have been presented by this uh, special ITG has been realized. Those they have not been realized have been addressed specifically today and they will now go into the realization. And uh, this is, has nothing to do with the number of years or whatever, but we have started to realize it's not yet finished. And uh, I ask also to you, you uh, as professional uh, sports writer or journalist to have a look 
on, uh, on our uh, FIFA.com, and you will see it is graphically presented uh, what, kind has n what kind of reforms have not been realized after the first uh, decision starting in 2011 to 2015. And now it is time to go on. Eh? Rauch, Schweizer Fernsehen, grüß dich, Herr Blatter. Mr. Blatter. It seemed to be very important for you that you would be able to finish your work with the reforms. And I would like to ask you, is it so important for you that you could include these reforms in your curriculum? Well, I will speak high German and not uh, not in our dialect, and the answer will come in high German. Indeed, you're right. Of course, now at this very juncture, when I'm making available and finishing my mandate and when we will have a new president in February, it is very important for me to show now that we will pull through these reforms until 20, February 26. And I thank you for raising this question. This is indeed for me and for the work of 40 years in FIRU, not just to leave, but 40 years in FIFA and to say goodbye when you have realized something good. Mr. President, Ibrahim Itsui from Al Jadid TV from Lebanon. Uh, I quote you, you said, I'm still the elected president, and you said that we will have an electoral uh, committee in 26 February. Does that mean in February 26 we have two presidents for the FIFA, and in this way, how, ki uh, how could we uh, elect a president since we have a president, and in this way, uh, when it will be your resignation? Thank you. It's a question of logic. We have now a president, and we are going to elect a new president. So in the moment there is a new president, president is the passage from the former president to the new president and it will be on the 26th. We will never have two presidents in FIFA unless, unless we have a second organization which is called the new FIFA or whatever. It has been in somewhere in the media we will have, but in FIFA, Fédération Internationale de Football Association, at the same time you have only one president. We take three more questions, please. Tas News Agency from Russia. Is it true that uh, Vitaly Mutko told uh, to FIFA representatives about referees' work during the semi final between Russia and Portugal? Vitaly Mutko, member of the FIFA Executive Committee, has uh, presented today. He had one intervention at the end of our meeting by inviting the whole to join the uh, draw ceremonies in St. Petersburg. He has said nothing else during this meeting, and at, mo at my knowledge, he has said nothing at all uh, concerning anything else that the draw for the World Cup 2018. Last two. Hello, uh, Sam Wallace from The Independent. Uh, Mr. Blatter, your uh, desire to go into radio has caused quite a stir. Do you, do you see yourself as news, sport, or, or, or just a bit of traffic? I go to geopolitics. This is my hobby. My hobby is the geography and the politics, and I go therein. If somebody accepts me, but there are so many radios in the world, I'm sure uh, somebody will be happy to listen to my voice. Last question, please. Mr. President, uh, Anthony Kastronakis, The Sun, England. Um, you have essentially laid down your mandate, which means you have resigned, uh, if I understand it correctly. So what I wanted to ask you is, why do you think, if you have resigned, you have to stay another eight months from the day you resigned in your role? And 
given everything that has happened to FIFA and all the controversy, is there any sense of shame on your part as you've overseen all of this? Any sense of personal failure? Any sense of regret? Regret, yes. But uh, you are absolutely wrong when you say putting a mandate at disposal is not abandoning the function. And I'm still the elected president by 133 national associations on the 29th, and I will use my mandate as president in responsibility and in my mission, what I have just explained uh, to one Swiss uh, journalist, is to make sure that when uh, at the end of February, I come at the end of my career, then I can say, the FIFA, we have started again uh, this, uh, the um, reform and to rebuild the reputation, the reputation of FIFA. And this is uh, important for me. And uh, the uh, resignation, I have never resigned of a position. I will never do it in my life. Otherwise, I spoke about my mother this morning or at the, at the beginning, then my father would come and he will kick me. This concludes our press conference. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. I just want, to, I just want to, to, to say a few words at the end of this. I would like to thank you so much for your appearance today in such a great number. I thank you for the support you are giving to the movement which is called International Football and FIFA. This beautiful game that has been invented on the British Islands, this beautiful game that has given to the world also the element of fair play. And we shall go forward in the FIFA with uh, the beautiful game, but we shall go forward also in fair play. Fair play means respect and discipline. I know that the football is an attacking game that is competing, but when competing, we shall use the weapons uh, that will give what this game is giving. What is giving this game to the world? Emotion, hope, and peace. This is the world of football. Emotion, hope, and peace. But in this world of football has entered interests which have nothing to do with the game. And I repeat what I have said. As long as you are on the field of play, you have the boundaries of the field. You have the time limit and you have the referees. But when out of the field of play, you don't have boundaries, you don't have referees, you don't have time limit. And here we are. Football emotion, football passion, and football hope. Thank you for coming here today, and I wish you well, as I wish well to our organization. Thank you for your interest.